So, good afternoon, all my Boss Chick followers and Boss Chick enthusiasts. Again, this is Dr. Carolyn Hall, CEO and founder of Boss Chick's Empowerment Coaches. And today, my video blog is entitled, She Shall Teach People How to Treat Her. Uh, this, in fact, is one of the commandments for my book, The Boss Chick's Playbook, A Girl's Design Guide to Purpose and Prosperity. Uh, I want to talk to you about this today because I had a really, really interesting discussion with somebody I love, right? One of my good girlfriends uh, is just an absolutely marvelous person and it kind of has the kind of heart that would just give anything to anybody. But one problem that she has is she has a problem saying no. Wait. She has a problem saying no. One of the issues that many women suffer from is yesitis, right? We suffer from yesitis in that we teach people how to treat us and we, we get mad when they don't respond the way that we think they should, right? I'll give you a perfect example. You got somebody who always is asking you for rides or asking you, can they borrow some money? Yet when you get in a bond, they're never to be found. Well. If you did it more than twice and you found out that they were never anywhere to be found, you taught that person how to treat you. You showed them that it was okay for them to always need you, but for you never to be able to need them. Now, am I saying that we should treat people in the very same manner that they treat us? No, because that would mean that if somebody's nasty to you, do you you're na you should be nasty to that person. Not saying that at all, because the Bible tells us that we should be slow to anger and quick to love, right? Uh, but what I am saying to you is, is that too often, especially with us women, because we're always taught that us saying no is us being mean, you know, and when we say no to people that we don't want to help anybody, we're not trying to, we should be trying to help folks if we see they're struggling and so on and so forth, right? But the truth of the matter is your time, your energy, your money are all equally valuable. And we often pour out all of these things to people that have no desire to pour back into us. And so what I'm saying to you is, you got to show people how you deserve to be treated. If you see that there's something, if you see that there's something that you don't necessarily vibe with, if there's something that you don't really uh, uh, like about how, a, how the other person is handling you, then I think that that's cause for a discussion, right? Not, not an altercation, but a discussion. I'll give you a perfect example. Um... I had a, 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 a girlfriend who I noticed that every time someone would go down with her, she called me and she would want to vent, right? But every time I called her and I'm going through something, she was too busy or she wouldn't answer the phone. I'm like, now, this, is, this is slightly problematic. Now, you call me and I'm your, uh, I'm your virtual uh, uh, linguistic trash dump. You tell me all your troubles, your concerns, your issues, but then when I need a voice to listen to me, you're nowhere to be found. You're busy. You got this. You got that. You got other problems you got to attend to. You, you know, and I'm expected to understand. Well, guess what I had to do? I had to learn how to pull back some of my time and reserve some of that energy because I finally got the picture that what I was teaching her was that it was okay for her to use me as her sounding board. And when I saw that her response was not the same, that this was not a reciprocal relationship, that I couldn't call her in the same way that she called me, then I pulled back. My pullback game is strong, <laughs> seriously. You know, it only takes me a couple of times to realize that, you know, that we're not, we're not on the same playing field in terms of the treatment for one another. Because when I'm your friend, your sister, your family member, whatever it is that I am to anybody, right? I'm going to always treat them in the way that I want to be treated, right? I'm going to treat them with godly love and kindness. But what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to be anybody's doormat. And neither should you. You know, because sometimes we as women, we, 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 we keep doing the same thing over and over again. And we expect different results, right? So when I was discussing this with this friend and I was talking to her about you know, teaching people how to treat her, she says to me, well, I feel like I shouldn't have to say it. They should know, right? Mistake, mistake, mistake. 
tell you why that's a mistake. Because when you don't tell people what your expectation is, and you assume that they understand what it is that you desire of them, the only person that's going to be disappointed in that is you. Right? You have to tell people what your expectation is. You know, I'm very specific. I'm very specific when I talk to people about what it is that I need and what it is that I desire. Why? Because I don't ever want to get into a place where we're ambiguous about what my expectation is of you. Right? If you disappoint point me, let it be because, guess what? That's just you. Just That's just your character. I don't want to be angry all based off of assumption. Because what happens is, is that when I get angry based off of assumption, right, that has a lot to do with things that I've internalized about disappointments that happened in my past, right? So if I go back to the book again, this comes from the Ball Chicks Playbook, commandment number nine, make sure you get your copy, you know, that we teach people how to treat us. Um, there's a verse in... Uh, New Testament, Luke 6, chapter, verse 31, it says, And as you wish that others would do to you, so do to them, right? So essentially, what, what it's saying for us is, is that we set the standard in our lives for how it is that people treat us. We show ourselves and our character through our behavior, right? Now, when we show our character and our behavior to other people, that does not mean that we have to, it, it, it's, it's, it makes us more godly because we say yes to everything that people ask us to do. No, because when you say yes to the, to the things that you don't want to do all the time, simply because you feel obligated, what you do is you set yourself up to become angry. And it's better to not do a thing at all than to do a thing with a resentful and angry heart. Mm, mm, did I say something? Did it resonate with you? Right? There's no harm in saying no. There's no harm in saying, you know what, even on, let's say, for instance, if you're, you're at work and you're working on a project, they've given you a big project, there's no harm in asking for help. I'd rather ask for help than to do what? Than to try to handle it all, all on my own, and then when if, when, whenever whatever fails, then I'm solely to blame for it, right? So I would rather ask for help and tell somebody, delegate responsibilities and tell them very specifically what it is that I need for them. You know, because again, this is, and, and I, I, I don't know that men do this, but I know, I know we women do it, right? We always assume and we do it, we do it in relationships, you know, like we, we, we tell our boyfriends, I've seen my friends do it with their husbands, where they make this assumption that he should know that she likes X, Y, Z because he's seen her get it all the time. Or he should know what it is that she likes to do because he's around her all the time. He, they, may not, they may not have ever really uh, uh, stuck with him, you know, because in truth, just like we got 5 million things going on throughout the day, they've got 5 million things going on throughout the day. They're not going to remember every tidbit and snippet of our conversations and our and our gatherings, right? And that doesn't mean that they love us any less. And so you also have to take into account what sort of language are you using or what sort of methods of communication are you having with people that let them know who you are and what your expectation is. Because I'm I'm, I'm serious. I'm so firm about I'm very firm about that. Doesn't mean that I mean because if you meet me, I promise you. I, I love a good laugh. I love to trip out. I'm, I love to dance. I love to have a good time. I love meeting people. But what I don't love is I don't love assumption. I'm going to tell you what I need and how I need it. Now, if you don't live up to that, that's all. That's, 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 that's on you. I told you exactly what it was that I needed. And, and, and I think that we really have to be very, very specific and methodical about our communication with other people because otherwise what we do is we create this sort of uh we create this sort of uh uh, uh mind boggling uh um um what, what's the word i'm looking for i'm trying to look for see show you how authentic i am i'm trying to find a word uh we create this 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 sort of invisible barrier between us and other people because again when they don't meet our expectations, we get disappointed and we get discouraged about our relationships. And then we get to looking funny at the people, right? 
So what I'm saying to you today is, is that you have to, you have to, you have to be very specific in your dealings with people, right? And you have to also let people know when you've taken on too much. There's no problem with you saying no. The, uh, be, saying no and turning people down is not mean. You have to have some self-care. You know, as women, a lot of times, we don't take care of ourselves as we should because we're always looking out for other people. We're always trying to make sure this is done, that is done. You know, we're always trying to make sure that we've, uh, we've accomplished these many goals or met this many standards. But in the meantime, we're not really taking care of ourselves the way that we should. And by self-care, you know, a lot of us have it confused because we think self-care is about buying stuff and, you know, going to the spa and going and, and going out and hanging out with friends. No, self-care is about the time and space that you carve out where you take care of you, right? That, that, that quiet time where you're able to really, really figure out who you are, the steps you need to take, the things that you need to do in your relationship, especially your relationship with God, right? But if you're spreading yourself thin by saying yes to everybody and allowing people to have you doing A, B, C, uh, G, E, F, and X, Y, Z, then how are you really being honorable and taking care of you? You're not doing it. It's not possible. So what I would encourage you to do is I would encourage you that whenever you get involved in any sort of relationship, be it platonic or romantic, right? Be very, very clear and concise about what it is that your expectations are. I'm not saying that you got to go in with the list like a job description, okay? Not saying that at all. But I'm saying that you got to be clear about what it is that you want and what your expectations are. I'll give an example. So, uh, let's say, I'm, I'm, let's say, that I'm talking to said brother, you know, and he and I, we're going on a couple of dates and he asked me, what is it that I'm looking for in a man or, you know, some of that nature, right? Then I think, I think that I'm well within my right to tell him that what I'm looking for is I'm looking for somebody who's looking for something long-term, uh, somebody who likes to date, somebody who uh, loves to go places, likes to travel, somebody who believes in, uh, you know, talking on the phone, spending time with me, you know, that's very clear and concise, right? Because if I get, and I say, well, you know, I don't really know what I'm on, uh, I mean, just long as he nice, then when we get in a relationship and we don't ever go anywhere, and he like, well, you ain't never say that. Mm. Right? I know, I'm sure you've heard that before, right? Well, you never said that before. I never knew that. Well, what's the best way to what's the what's best way to stop that by telling them by making it clear what it is that you want seriously even on your job let's say for instance you're working there have been times when i've done projects with other people right and i hate group projects but we know sometimes they're inevitable it's inevitable when you're in school or on your job it's inevitable that you don't have to work in a group project <laughs> okay so let's say that we're working in a group project. To keep down on chaos and confusion, one of the things that I think is best to do is that somebody takes a leadership role and delegates responsibilities. And even if nobody wants to take a leadership role, then everybody still needs to know what their role is in a group so that we're not stepping on each other's toes and so that one person is not doing all the work. Because then what happens is that one person gets resentful and that one person gets angry about what, what they've done and what everybody else hadn't done. Well, the intentions were never made clear. So my hope today is that you learn that saying no and making your intentions clear does not make you aggressive, doesn't make you uh, bossy, right? Because we've been taught bossy, but you know, we've also been taught that being bossy is bad, right? But you have to be assertive enough, right? Because your assertiveness is part of your boss chick status. I'm not saying aggressive. Aggressive means that I assert my will over yours. Assertive simply means that I'm, I stand strong on whatever it is that I believe and I make my intentions known. That's all that assertive means, right? So it is very, very important that we learn to be assertive in our character. And that's part of that boldness uh, in that boss chick status. Remember that B in boss stands for boldness. That's part of that boldness. We gotta be bold. We cannot always just say yes because it seems like the right thing to do. 
You know, we can't always uh, 